Given that two positive real numbers satisfy x, y equals to 18, find the minimum value of x plus 2y. Now, this is an optimization question because it's asking for a minimum value of something. And when you see an optimization question, you should look for an equation that's usually given, and that's called a constraint. And the target function to minimize or maximize, that's called your target. And the way you solve optimization questions is to first solve the constraint for one of the variables. Uh, let's divide both sides by x and get y equals to 18 over x. And then use that to replace the variable that you can to make the target as a function of a single variable. See, if you replace x plus 2, if you replace this y by 18 over x, then it becomes x plus 2 times 18 over x, and that's just a function of a single variable, which is x plus 36 over x. Once you have that, then you can use the concept of critical numbers and first derivative tests to find out the minimum value. So let's do that, f prime of x, x differentiates to 1, and 1 over x differentiates to negative x, 1 over x squared. Right? Uh, 1 over x differentiates to negative 1 over x squared. You can deduce this from the power rule, but it's good to just memorize it as a sec separate rule because it appears a lot of times. Okay. Now we want to find the critical numbers. And uh, we said they equal to 0. You get 1 equals to 36 over x squared. Multiply both sides by x squared. So multiply by x squared, x squared. And that gives you x squared equals to 36. And that gives you x equals to plus or minus 6. OK. Uh, now, it says positive real numbers. So negative doesn't, doesn't work. So you only, get, you only need x equals to positive 6. Okay. So if x is 6, we now have to divide the number line uh, starting from 0 to infinity. So 6 is our critical number. Pick a test point before and after. So I'm going to pick 1 and then 10. And you want to evaluate the f prime at these points. So f prime of 1 is 1 minus 36 over 1 squared which is 1 minus 36, which is negative 35, so it's negative. The value is not important. What's important is that f prime is negative here, okay? And then f prime of 10 would be 1 minus 36 over 10 squared, that's 100, so it's 1 minus 0 0.36, which is 0 0.64, which is positive, so it's positive here. That means that your function would be your function would be like the function f. Yeah, I don't like that color. The function f would be going down uh, before six, and then it will go up. It will be decreasing and then increasing, which makes this six as x equal to six is absolute minimum because overall it's decreasing and then increasing again. So this is the lowest point on the graph. And uh, then you al always have to read the question again. Sometimes they want the x and y values. Sometimes they want the uh, value of the function itself. And uh, depending on what they ask, you have to uh, come up with a different answer. In our case, uh, it's asking for the value. So you have to evaluate the function at 6, which is 6 plus 36 over 6. And that's 6 plus 6, which is 12. So the answer would be 12. Okay, another similar question. Given that x squared plus 4y squared equals to 9, find the maximum value of x plus y. All right. So uh, let's see. You want to solve this for one of the variables. 
if you try to solve for y, then you later have to divide by 4 at some point, and it's not so, so pleasant to do. So let's just solve for x squared, because that's easier to solve. Okay? Uh, I'm doing this because th this is your constraint, and that's your target. Okay. Yeah, once you can figure out the constraint and target, it's easy to solve these optimization questions. Of course, there are some word problems that are not so straightforward, but uh, a lot of them are easy. Okay, so you solve for x squared, which is uh, 9 minus 4y squared by subtracting 4y squared both sides, and then you take the square root, plus or minus square root of 9 minus 4y squared. Now, because we're trying to find the maximum value, we want x and y to be both positive. If x is negative, then it will be less than when, when we can do it using a positive number. So uh, we choose x to be the positive 9 minus 4y squared because we want maximum. Okay. And then what do you do? Once you solve the constraint, plug that into your target function and you end up with square root of 9 minus 4y squared plus y as your target function. So that's your function of y. Afterwards, it's just a matter of finding the absolute maximum. So let's differentiate this. And because uh, since uh, square root of x, square root of x prime is equal to 1 over 2 radical x, and 9 minus 4y squared is nested inside, if I differentiate that, that will be 1 over 2 times 9 minus 4y squared times 9 minus 4y squared prime. And then plus uh, y prime is 1. Okay. And then the derivative of negative 8y, the derivative is negative 8y, and you have 2 times square root of 9 minus 4y squared plus 1. And uh, that's when that's uh, that's when I put this equal to zero because I need this to be equal to zero in order to find the critical number. Okay, so let's put this equal to zero. Let's move this to the other side so it, it's uh, one equals to eight y over two times radical nine minus four y squared. Okay, since I need more room, I raised everything, and then uh, I have to simplify this by dividing top and bottom by 2, so that's going to be 4y, right? And then we multiply square root of 9 minus 4y squared, so let's multiply it over here, so you have square root of 9 minus 4y squared equals to 4y. Let's square both sides, so 9 minus 4y squared equals to 16y squared. And then adding this to the other side, you get 9 equals to 20y squared, so uh, we're almost there. We can now solve for y squared by dividing by 20. Take the square root, so y is equal to square root of 9 over square root of 20. Square root of 9 is 3. Uh, 4 times 5 is 20, so 4 can come outside as a 2. And then finally, you want to rationalize the denominator by multiplying by square root of 5 top and bottom, which gives you 3 radical 5 over 2 times 5, which is 10. Okay, I should really be doing plus or minus, because I've taken away a square. Uh, but if, you, if, if you're trying to maximize, you want the y to be positive, right? So we're just going to choose this. Okay, so here is what we have. We have uh, y equals to 3 radical 5 over 10. And see, I need y to be a positive value, so it's 0. And then here's 3 radical 5 over 10. And then there's also the maximum value of y. See. 9 minus 4y squared is inside the square root, so this has to be positive. So 9 is greater than 4y squared, and you divide, so it's uh, 9 over 4 is 
greater or equal to y squared, then you take the square root, you get 3 over 2 as the maximum value for y. So 3 over 2 is your maximum value. And uh, between these two numbers, I need to figure out a test point to find, uh, yeah, we, we need to figure out the test point in order to find out uh, when the function is maximized. Right? So our function, if you recall, it was uh, f was equal to, uh, what was it? Yeah, square root of 9 minus 4y squared. plus y. That's our function. We want to maximize this function and we think since this, this is the critical number uh, it should it should be the maximum and uh, one way to do it would be to choose test points before and after but another way to do this uh, is since it's a bounded interval with endpoints uh, you can just evaluate the function at the critical numbers and at the endpoints and just figure out which is the maximum. So f of 0 is, if you plug in 0 you get square root of 9 plus 0 which is 3. f of 3 over 2, well uh, we just found out this 3 over 2 value because that, that makes this 0, right? So that's going to be 0 here whereas y is 3 over 2 so that's 3 over 2. And then finally uh, f of f of uh, 3 radical 5 over 10 well if you plug in that y squared becomes 9 over 20 so it's square root of 9 minus 4 times 9 over 20 and then plus 9 over uh, 3 radical 5 over 10 okay and then uh, 9 over 5 it's uh, 4 times 9. Okay, so if you, if you simplify this, first divide by 5, uh, 9 is 45 over 5, right? 45 minus 9 is 36 over 5, square root. And plus, uh, you also have... 3 radical 5 over 10 and that's 6 over radical 5 multiply radical 5 top and bottom which gives you five, 6 radical 5 over 5 plus 3 radical 5 over 10 and then finally uh, if you make common denominators you can multiply by 2 top and bottom, so it's 12 radical 5 plus 3 radical 5, which gives you 15 radical 5. Okay, so that's that's the maximum value, because this is bigger than these other ones. Right? Uh, see, radical 5 is about 2.2, so if you multiply 2.2 to 15, that's uh, 30, 33. Okay. Uh, and dividing by 10 gives you 3.3. So it's, this is bigger than the other ones. So we know that this is the answer. A box with square base is shown left. What is the formula for the volume in terms of x and y? Okay, so for a, volume is length times width times height. So it's x squared times y. B, what is the formula for surface area in terms of x and y? Well, uh, see, all the sides look like x with the base and y as the height, and you have four sides. So the surface area would have first x times y and four of these. But then you have the top and the bottom, and those are both x, x by x squares. So you have two of x squares. So that's the surface area. Okay, so now part C is our part C is our optimization question. It says the surface area has to be 40. So 40 must be 4xy plus 2x squared. And uh, K 
given this, you have to figure out how to maximize v equals x squared times y. And uh, since this is an equation and this is a formula, for it's a function for x and y, this is our constraint. So uh, as always, when you solve an optimization question, it's important to know which is the constraint because constraint is an equation which you can solve for one of the variables. And although it's hard to solve for x because you have x here and x there, it's not hard to solve for y. So let's do that. Uh, subtract 2x squared both sides. And then divide by 4x. So you get y equals to 40 minus 2x squared over uh, 4x. And then uh, if you divide top and bottom by 2, it's 20 minus x squared over 2x. And that's it. That's, that's, uh, that's the uh, function y, y solved in terms of x. Now, what do you do with this? You plug it into the, to the target function. We're trying to maximize the volume. So we're trying to maximize this target function. And the moment you replace y by this, you end up with a function of x. So you have f equals to, f of x equal to, x squared times 20 minus x squared over 2x. And since you have, a, have an x down here and x, up, x squared up here, you can cancel one of the x's. And the result is you have uh, x times 20 minus x squared, and you still have a 2 down there. OK, so that is the volume. And we're trying to find the maximum possible value, uh, where x, I, x and y are positive values. So uh, we're trying to find the maximum of this uh, in the assumption, with the assumption that x is positive. Right? So let's differentiate. Let's simplify this a little bit more. It's 1 half 20 times x and x times x squared, so that's x cubed. I multiply them out because uh, if, I, if I have to differentiate like this, I have to use the product rule. But if I multiply them out, I don't need the product rule, so it's easier. So I'm going to differentiate now. And that gives you 20 minus 3x squared. Set that equal to 0, so that will give you, um, that will give you Let's use a different color. Uh, 20 minus 3x squared equals to 0, which gives you 20 equals to 3x squared. So x squared is 20 over 3. So that gives you x equals to square root of 20 over square root of 3. And uh, rationalizing the denominator by multiplying radical 3 top and bottom, I get square root of 60 over 3. but uh, 60 is divisible by 4. 4 comes out as 2, so I have 2 radical 15 over 3. Okay, so let's remember this. This is our function, and that's our critical number. So our function is x times 20 minus x squared over 2, and the critical number we just found is is uh, x equals to 2 radical 15 over 3. All right, now uh, we will, well, square root of 15 is, square root of 16 is 4, right? So this is pretty close to 4. 4 times 2 is 8. 8 divided by 3 is, well, 8 is close to 9. 9 divided by 3 is about 3. So you get something slightly less than 3. So knowing that, let's put that on the number line. Well, it can't be negative or 0, so our number line should be only the right side of 0. And here's our critical number, 2 radical 15 over 3. And because this is something like 3, I know that uh, if I choose 1 and 10, they will belong in each of these intervals. And what do I do? I have to evaluate f prime at these points to make sure that what we have is the maximum. So let's 
bring back our derivative. Our derivative is 1 half 20 minus 3x squared. f prime of x is 1 half 20 minus x squared, 3x squared. And then we plug in 1. So that's 17 over 2, which is positive. So f prime is positive. Okay, and then f prime of 10 would be 1 half 20 minus 3 times 10 squared. That's 300. So uh, it's obviously a negative number. I don't even want to calculate it. It's, I, all I want to know is it's negative. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that our function will be increasing before this number and decreasing after this number. So, so this, this number will give us the absolute maximum. Okay, And what is the actual value of the absolute maximum? Well, uh, so now once we figured out the absolute maximum, because it's asking for a maximum possible volume, now we evaluate the function at 2 radical 15 over 3, which is 2 times radical 15 over 3, and then 20 minus uh, this squared will give you um, 15 times 4, 60 over 9. But that same is 20 over 3 divided by 2. 2, 2 cancels. And uh, this is uh, 60 over 3. 60 minus 20 is 40. So it will be 40 times square root of 15 over 3 times 3, which is 9. So that's our maximum value. And because the question has units in there, uh, the length unit is inches. So surface area will be in square inches. And volume will be in cubic inches. So we should put cubic inches as the answer. Okay. So that's our final answer. A closed rectangular box with square base Okay, so another box with square base and a volume of 12 cubic feet is to be constructed using two different materials. Okay, the top is to be made of metal costing $3 per square foot and remainder of a wood costing $2 per square foot. Please find the dimensions of the box for which the cost of materials is minimized. Okay, uh, I don't know what this rectangular box is used for, uh, but uh, it seems like a pretty big one. It's a 12 cubic feet, so it's measured in feet. And uh, we just had a question like that, which is you have a square base. So if this side is x, that's also x, and this side will be y. Now, the volume is computed as x squared times y and in the previous question this was our target but look at this the volume is given a value so the volume is x squared times y is equal to 12 so that's going to be our constraint and then uh, you need the cost of materials to be minimized so we need the cost function and that's our target now, uh, let's look at the top area. Area of top is x times x, so that's x squared. And then cost of top is like this. If this value is 1, in other words, if it will be 1 square feet, 1 square foot. And then in that case, you're going to get, you're going to be paying $3 for it, right? If x is 2, 2 squared will be 4, 4 times 3, in that case, you're going to pay $12 for it. So it looks like whatever we get as the area, you just multiply by 3, and that's the cost that we'll need to build the top. Now, how about the remain, remaining wood, uh, the, the sides and the bottom? So uh, area of remaining would be there's, there's a x, y, and you have four of these, so it's 4x, y, 
plus the bottom, which is x squared. And once again, because these are $2 per square foot, cost of remaining would be 2 times 4, 4xy plus x squared. Okay. And then adding these two will give you the cost function, right? Cost will be 3x squared plus 8xy plus 2x squared after multiplying by, by 2. And then since 2x squared and 3x squared are like terms, you get 5x squared plus 8xy. Okay, we're almost there. Okay, now, uh, so we have the cost function, we have the constraint. And the cost function is our target. So we take the constraint, solve for one of the variables, and we have to plug it into the target. And uh, the way we do this is by dividing by x squared. So y equals to 12 over x squared. And then you replace this y by 12 over x squared. So that's going to give us the function, the target as a function of x, which is 5x squared plus uh, 8x times 12 over x squared. 12 times 8 is 96. So it's 5x squared plus 96 over x. Okay, so you have this function to minimize. Let's now try to find the minimum of this function by using calculus. So f of x is equal to 5x squared plus 96 over x. Differentiate. That gives you 10x. And then 1 over x differentiates to negative 1 over x squared. We see this a lot, so you should just memorize it. Uh, so we get uh, 96 over x squared. To get the critical number, you have to set this equal to 0. Uh, move this to the other side, so you get 10x equals to 96 over x squared. Multiply by x squared, so you get 10x cubed equals to 96. Divided by 10, 96 over 10. And, well, top and bottom are divisible by 2, so it's 48 over 5. And then you take the cube root of it, and you get x equals the cube root of 48 over 5. Okay, we still have to figure out if this is indeed the the minimum I want the minimum of this right so we can we can do the following and we can plug in well here's cube root of 48 over 5 well that's bigger than 1 for sure so I'm gonna choose a 1 here as a test point and uh, this should this is less than 10 because 10 is a uh, cube root of 1000 this number is definitely less than 1000 so using these let's uh, let's evaluate f prime f prime of 1 is 10 minus 96 over 1 squared so it's negative so it's negative here f prime of 10 is 10 times 10, which is 100, minus 96 over 10 squared, which is 100. That's definitely positive. So we see that because this is our, our f prime, the function would be decreasing and then increasing, making this as a true absolute minimum. So we prove that it's going to be absolute minimum. And we still have to be careful here because, see, it's not asking for the minimum cost. It's asking for the dimension of the box where the cost of materials is minimized. So uh, dimension of the box is about x and y, right? So uh, this is one of the sides. And we have to bring back our y. What was our y? Uh, y is 12 over x squared. So, so we need y to be 12 over x squared. Now, since uh, 
this is a word problem. Uh, it's a an actual word problem for a practical purpose. Uh, it's better if you come up with a decimal value because uh, if you're actually asking the workers to make this thing, you don't tell them, I want one side to be cube root of 48 over 5. That doesn't make sense, right? So what we should do is we should use a calculator to evaluate this. So first uh, you do 48 divided by 5. Uh, that's 9.6, right? So I'm going to take the nth root where I take the cube root of 9.6. That's uh, 2.2513. Let's uh, copy that. Paste it here. Oh, okay. That's over here. Okay. So that that's our x value. So we have this value here as our x value. And everything is in feet, so this is 2.1253 feet. And then to get the y value, you have to divide that by x squared, right? So uh, let's go back to our calculator. Let's take that value and then square that. And then do now 12 divided by this number here. And that gives you 2.6566. So let's copy that also. Paste. OK. So here is our value. Okay, so now the answer would be, I think realistically you're gonna only going to be able to do like one hundredth of a feet of a foot. So uh, let's say uh, it's two point, if you round it from the thousandths, it's uh, 2.13. So it's 2.13 feet by 2.13 feet because it's a square base. And then the height would be 2.66 feet. That would give us the maximum, or, or no, not maximum, uh, minimum cost. Find the closest point on the graph y equals x squared plus 4 to the point 0, 0,8. All right, so if we denote by x comma y any point on this curve, then the distance between 0, 0,8 to x, y would be square root of the difference of x squared and then difference of y squared. Okay. And then you're trying to minimize this because it's the closest point. Now, minimizing a function is the same thing as minimizing it squared. So uh, let's rewrite the goal. Goal is to minimize d squared, which is x squared plus uh, y minus 8 squared is y squared minus 16y plus 64. And uh, the reason I square it bec is because if I square it, then the square root goes away. And it's a lot easier to, to minimize this function compared to minimizing this function. So that's a neat little trick. Uh, you can still solve it without doing this d squared trick. But uh, the derivative will be more painful if you do that. Okay. All right. Now, uh, so I have this function, the target function that is in two variables. So I need to make this into a function of a single variable by using this constraint. Uh, if you see an equation, that's a constraint. And uh, if that's a constraint, then you can replace y by x squared plus 4. So here is what we get. We have a, a function 
which is x squared plus x squared plus 4 squared minus 16 x squared plus 4 plus 64 and uh, that's going to be x squared plus x squared squared is x to the fourth double the product that's 8x squared 4 squared that's 16 minus 16x 16 squared minus 64 plus 64 so that's going to be uh, let's see x to the fourth and then the x squared are in here right so you have uh, 8 minus 16 that's negative 8 x squared plus x squared so that's minus 7 x squared 64 64 cancels and so you get positive 16 okay so that's the function to minimize let's differentiate it that gives you 4 x squared minus 14x, no, 4x cubed, and uh, we have to find out when this is equal to 0. Okay, all right, so we can factor this out by x, x, 4x squared minus 14 equal to 0. So x is 0, or 4x squared minus 14 is 0. That's 4x squared equals to 14. Square with both sides. So you get uh, 2x equals to plus minus square root of 14. And finally divide by 2, you get x equals to plus or minus square root of 14 over 2. Okay. And then uh, for these values, we need to figure out the whether you have a relative max or relative min. Uh, but we already know that a fourth order polynomial will have n behavior like that, and it will have three turning points, right? At most three turning points. So uh, let's save some time by, instead of using the first derivative test, let's just use the second derivative. F double prime is equal to 12x squared minus 14 and if you plug in 0 you get negative 14 so it's negative so it's a frowning face so that gives you a relative max so so we know that x equal to 0 is a relative maximum on the other hand f double prime of plus or minus square root of 14 over 2 that gives you 12 times 14 over 4 minus 14 so it's 3 times 14 minus 14 that's positive so in that case you have a smiley face which gives you a relative minimum and because of that uh, since we know the graph looks like this since we know the graph looks like that uh, we can deduce that it, it will have a relative minimum at these two places and it turns out that because of symmetry, see this is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, right? y equals to x squared plus 4 is a parabola that's like that. And 0, 8 is right here. So there will be two points, one on the left and one on the right, that has the same distance. So uh, there are actually two points. Uh, one is the positive one and the other is negative one. Okay, so we're almost there. Uh, we know that the uh, x equals to plus or minus square root of 14 over 2 will give you the closest point. But now we have to find out the y because we need to find the points. Points are x and y coordinates. So let's plug in plus minus square root of 14 over 2 squared plus 4. That's equal to 14 over 4 plus 4, which is uh, 7 over 2 plus 4, which is, let's see, 8, 15 over 2. So the answer is, actually this is two points, plus or minus square root of 14 over 2, 
comma 15 over 2. There are two points. And it makes sense if you draw the graph. It's this graph. This graph is y equals to x squared plus 4. And this point is 8. And you're looking for these two points, which, is, which are closest to this point. Okay, each page of a book will contain 30 square inches of print, and each page must have a 2 inch margins at the top, bottom, and 1 inch mar margins at the, each side. What is the minimum possible area of a page? So let's do this. Uh, let's just call x as the page width and y as the page height. And uh, we know that. Uh, the each page of a book should contain 30 square inches of print. Okay, so when we define x and y, we have two choices. We can make this x and y to be the entire page or just the print area. And uh, one would be easier to solve than the other. Uh, and I choose this to be the print area. So this will be our print area. And then there should be like two inches up top and bottom and that'd be one inch left and right okay now the advantage of this is that our constraint just becomes x times y equals to 30 so the the constraint is a simple equation and since we have to solve the constraint for one variable we need to divide by we can easily solve by uh, dividing by x both sides now, if you chose the x and y to be the entire page area, then it will be a lot harder to divide and the equation will become ugly. Okay, So you can try that to convince yourself, indeed, this is the better way to do things. Okay, so what's the target? Target is the entire area of the page. Now, the actual page height would then be y plus 4 because it has 2 down here and 2 up there. And the width will be increased by 1 plus 1. So x plus 2 is what you get. And that's your area. So that's your target. It's a function of x and y. So we are almost there. We solved the constraint for y. So you plugged into the target. And now you have a function of x, which is x plus 2 times 30 over x plus 4. Okay, multiply this out and x times 30 over x, that's 30. x times 4 is 4x. 2 times 30 over x, that's uh, 60 over x. And 2 times 4, that's 8. So you get 4x plus 60 over x plus 8 plus 30, so that's 38. Okay. Uh, it's asking for a minimum possible area of such a page, so we just need the, the minimum value of this. So let's differentiate. Use a different color. Derivative is f prime of x equals to 4 plus oh, 1 over x. That differentiates to negative, right? So it's minus 60 over x squared. Differentiates to negative 1 over x squared. And then 38 is a constant, so that becomes 0. Set that equal to 0 to find our critical number. So x squared is 60 divided by 4, which is 15. So we know that x must be square root of 15. I don't take the minus because x is a length, so it can't be negative. And so you get square root of 15. And all these word problems will likely appear in the calculator section. Uh, you, you'll be using the calculator, so let's use the calculator. Let's see, uh, squ square root of 15 gives you 3.873. 3.873. So this is 3.873. Draw the number line. 3.873. Uh, and then test points. Here's one. And let's choose uh, five. Or let's choose ten. I like ten. 
Okay, so f prime of 1 is 4 minus 60 over 1 squared, which is negative. So f prime is negative here. f prime of 10 would be 4 minus 60 over 10 squared, which is 100. So it's 4 minus 0 0.6. So that's going to be positive. Which means f is decreasing and then increasing. So that tells us that this is minimum. So that's going to give us the absolute minimum. And once you have the absolute minimum, you now just have to plug that back into the original function. And uh, that's your answer. Right? So uh, let's just use radical 15 because uh, that, that should give us an easy enough answer. So let's see. You have uh, f of square root of 15, which is 4 times square root of 15 plus 60 over square root of 15 and then plus 38. Now the reason I like this one is because I know that 60 is 4 times 15. So if I rationalize the denominator by multiplying by square root of 15 top and bottom, this just becomes 15 canceling with the entire 15. So the result is that I have 4 radical 15 plus 4 radical 15, which is 6 times square root of 15, and then add 38. Okay, So that's easier to plug into the calculator. So I need 6 times square root of 15, and then plus 38. And that gives us 61.24. 61.24. So that's 61.24 square inches. Don't forget that unit.